Good evening. The April 27th tornadoes caused unprecedented damage, destruction, and personal pain and suffering for people in our region. Tonight, we ask for your help to assist our friends and neighbors to rebuild and recover from this terrible tragedy. News 5 WCYB and Fox Tri-Cities, in conjunction with Food City, the United Way, First Bank, and Tri-Summit Bank, now present Path of Destruction, Road to Recovery. Please help. Thank you. We've seen rough weather, but nothing like this in recorded history. In the middle of this April night, nine powerful tornadoes ripped through Tennessee and marched through Virginia, killing 14 people, tearing homes from their foundations, leaving nothing but piles of debris behind. One minute, a lifelong home, the next, homeless. From heartache to hopelessness. Now your neighbors and your friends need your help. From News 5 WCYB and Fox Tri-Cities, Path of Destruction, Road to Recovery. Good evening, I'm Ann Carter. And I'm Georg Zeigen. The devastation, as you saw, is really unimaginable. Tonight, the recovery is far from over. We all know what happened the night of April 27th. Tornado warning after tornado warning, then destruction. If you're in this area, you need to be uh, taking shelter uh, right now. I mean, this is a dangerous storm. Doppler radar indicated tornado and uh, could be one on the ground right now as it continues to move up along Interstate 81. I never, ever thought a tornado would come out of those mountains right over there. Uh, you know, and immediately, if you would have told me, you know, this year, 2011, we're going to have a tornado, I told you, ain't no way, not in, not in Camp Creek. The one that is uh, crashing uh, with some tremendous amounts of hail, the way it sounds right now, uh, over top Bristol. I'm not sure if that isn't like strong winds. Yeah. Obviously, the hail that we are hearing now up to one to two, possibly up to two inch, one and a half to two inches in diameter uh, right now. All kinds of thunder, and then all of a sudden there was wind came, and it was like a, a ghost just sat down on us. And the next thing you know, everything just started falling apart. Here's what we were hearing coming down just a, a little while ago with meteorologist Donnie Cox. Uh, looks like walnut, I would say walnut size hail coming down. Uh, from uh, what was that? Were you was that wind? Was it wind that came through? Also, was it all hail? Hey, okay, so I mean, it sounded like a roar. Watched it last night come up through the valley here. A lot of friends up here, I know, all the way through this countryside, and was worried about them too, you know. But thank God they're they're alive, and, was, and I just hope the best for everybody and get through it, you know, as a community. Everybody's strong out through here, so. Tonight, as you can see, those who lost everything need your help. And that is why we are here right now. We're teaming up with United Way and making it easy for you to donate. Just $10 goes a long way. And you can do it with a simple text from your cell phone. The information you see there, it's at the bottom of your screen on just how to do that. Just text and you'll send $10 from you to your neighbors who really need it the most. It couldn't be easier. And to help victims in Virginia, text the word support to 27722. Now to help victims in Tennessee, text the word green, that's green with an E on the end, to 27722. Standard texting charges apply. You can also go online at WCYB.com to donate. More information on how your dollars are going to the right to the most affected people in our region in just a moment. But first, let's go live to one of the hardest hit areas. Chief Meteorologist Dave Dirks, who has just about seen it all, was even stunned by what happened that night. And Dave's live in Washington County, Virginia. So Dave, where were you were standing now is actually ground zero for one of those tornadoes, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Just terrible destruction here in the Glade Spring area. On April 27th, a swarm of tornadoes unprecedented for our area tore across northeast Tennessee and southwest Virginia. Nine tornadoes, the first touching down in northern Greene County around 930 that evening, and the last touching down right here in the Glade Spring, Virginia area of southwest Virginia around 115. And you guys are absolutely right. You almost have to be here in person to really uh, fully appreciate the scope of the damage and the totality of some of the damage that uh, 
uh, many of these homes and businesses suffered uh, during the course of that night. And you know, my, 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 uh, my heart really goes out to the folks uh, who had their lives changed forever and, and really had uh, their lives turned upside down in just a few seconds that night. And, and, I, and I could only imagine if it, if it were my family or if it were my home that had been uh, damaged or destroyed, I know I would really appreciate the help. And of course, that's why we're here tonight with this program to step up and, and help our neighbors in need. And we want to encourage all of our uh, viewers uh, and bring that attention to them, uh, the, the, the need that's out there, and encourage them to uh, donate and uh, hopefully help these folks pick up the pieces and, and get their lives back on track. Good evening. I'm Steve Smith, President and CEO of Food City Stores. At Food City, we, like so many other people, saw the terrible devastation the tornadoes created as they came through our areas recently. We, like so many other corporations and companies, stepped up with monetary contributions to the relief fund. We saw our Food City teammates do fundraisers throughout our stores and offices. We also saw people take vacation days to go help their neighbors clear out some of the devastation. But there's still much more that needs to be done. Over the next few days, as you shop in your Food City stores throughout the Tri-Cities region, you'll be able to make a monetary contribution as you check out with your groceries. And 100% of the proceeds will go to help the tornado victims through the United Way agencies in our area. There's much still left to be done, but we live in a wonderful and generous area. So let's all work together to step up and help with these tornado relief efforts. Joining us now are two men at the heart of this fundraising effort, the CEO of the Russell County and Washington County, Virginia United Way, Travis Staten, and the United Way's Fred Parker. Travis, we're going to begin with you. This is such a monumental effort. How does it work? Uh, it's truly uh, really a large undertaking, but it's been so nice to see our community come together and join to help our friends, neighbors, and families to recover from this effort. And, and of course, anytime folks give money here in our area, they want to know where is it going. Does this money stay here? Yes, 100% of the, the monies that we raise are staying here. None are leaving this area, as well as no administrative fees will be deducted from these monies either. Okay, tell us about the turnaround for the donations. How quickly, if we were to donate tonight, mm -hmm. text or email tonight, how quickly will that money actually be used? These monies are currently being used today, tonight, right now as we speak. We started utilizing our funds uh, actually the week after the disaster and started assisting individuals with pod rentals and things of that nature. Uh, they'll be used tomorrow morning that fast. Wow. And, and I know that the United Way really supports several agencies. I'm wondering which agencies will get the money as part of this recovery effort? Uh, this is a unique situation for United Way. Agencies will not get the monies. People will get the monies. All right. And, and Fred, you not only deal with this professionally with United Way, but it hit you personally as well, right? That's right. How did that happen? Uh, we had damage to, uh, to, to our major damage to our house. Uh, our barn was destroyed. Buildings were destroyed. Uh, fences were destroyed, and we basically don't have a tree left on the place. Wow. You, you said that, that your home, home is damaged. Is it still livable, or do you have to live somewhere <clears> else? <throat> For the time being, it's still livable. Okay. We will have to move out during renovation or demolition, whichever they decide. Okay, and, and are you one of those folks who has tarps on, on, on your roof? Oh, yes. Okay. I, I look like the uh, Blue Pancake restaurant. Mm. <laughs> okay. Do you have any idea how long it's going to take to repair your house? have no idea the uh you know right now all the contractors are fairly booked up so sure. it could be six months it could be nine months but wow. we are so fortunate and so blessed because we uh, we uh, we compared to other people uh we came out very well right absolutely and everyone's healthy in your family too right that's correct okay fred parker travis Staten, thank you both so much for being here and for all the united way is doing and remember we have more on how you can help on wcyb.com and speaking of Washington County, Virginia, News 5 WCYB, Fox Tri-Cities Paul Johnson is there, and he joins us from Glade Spring. And BJ, I know you were one of the first in the field the night of the storm, so, so I'm curious, what do you remember? Well, Garrick, uh, I just stopped, uh, stepped off the Fox set with Rebecca around 11 o'clock, and we heard there was some storm damage. So I went out with the crew around Bristol to check out some of the hell damage and came back and did a live shot. And then that's when we started hearing some chatter on the scanner about some problems in southwest Virginia. So I knew that uh, Abbey Nunn and the Glen Rokey area was affected, so we headed up the interstate, and then I got a call from my news director said, there's something bad happening at exit 29 in Glade Spring. So we started this way. We got to within about a mile, 
and traffic was stopped. That was our first sign there was something wrong. So we uh, hiked on in, got close, and that's when it became very apparent there'd been a tornado here. Lights flashing, sirens blasting. It had all the makings of a real disaster. Just before 11 o'clock, a suspected tornado ripped through exit 29 in Glade Spring, Virginia. Huge trucks tossed like tinker toys. Signs ripped in half. And Brian Yarber, who watched his home crumble around him. I just heard a noise. It was just a, I don't know, just a weird noise I hadn't heard. I put my arm around my grandson and boom, the whole side of the house was gone. Everything was gone. It was a rainy night at the Petro station. Truckers filling up their trucks with gas. That is until the storm hit and all of a sudden there was debris everywhere like this tree. Tornado come through tearing up everything. What'd you do? I sat down on the side of bed and prayed just like anybody would. How long did it last? It lasted like probably five minutes. And then it, it was like a black. It's just like black and then it went clear. And in the wind, it just, it's gone. The Iron Skillet restaurant was packed with customers. Renee Burke had just put out the salad bar when a big truck decided to make its own drive through slicing off the rear of the dining room. It was scary. How terrifying was it? It was very terrifying. <laughs> and I didn't even see that until after the fact. I returned to the station, I teamed up with Tara Taylor, and one of the first persons we talked to that morning was Pokey Harris, the EMA director of Washington County, and she's with us now. Pokey, through all the training you've had in your career, did anything prepare you for what you were about to face? You prepare to respond and you prepare for recovery efforts, but you're never prepared for the shock of such devastation. I know the community has been disappointed by the decision by FEMA not to give federal aid to Glade Spring in Southwest Virginia, but how encouraging is it to have a community like this that is pulled together to support the folks here? Overwhelming. Uh, the, the individuals, the county government themselves, the organizations that have pulled together for this long-term recovery effort, uh, we're committed to see the people through this and, and to help them get back on their feet and start to rebuild their lives. And you're to be commended for the great work you've done here. People speaking very highly of you. It's been a team effort. All right. That's Pokey Harris. Now remember, the numbers are on the screen. Only you can help. These people need help. That's why we're here, and I'll be here all night. And Garrick. Those images really are still riveting. We were talking to someone, unless you've been out there, mm. as bad as the pictures look, it, it's really worse on the ground. It, it looks like something that we are used to seeing in the Midwest, maybe Oklahoma, Texas, Nebraska, but it really, it's not. These folks are folks you know, and, and they're your neighbors. News 5 WCYB reporter Angela Yingling joins us tonight from Greene County. And Angela, you've been covering these stories for these folks for weeks now. Yeah, and I came down here that Thursday morning. It was about 5 o'clock in the morning, and it was still dark out. Hundreds of volunteers were already stationed at the command post ready to help out. And as soon as the sun came up and I got my first glimpse at the Camp Creek community here in Greene County, it was truly shocking. I still come down today, and I've seen it a dozen times, and it still shocks me. It's an entire community devastated. People are gone. I said it's like a ghost town here all of a sudden. People have moved on. They have found temporary homes, and they've left what was here, their one-time home at Camp Creek. What little was left after a tornado ripped through Camp Creek is now gone. Homes flattened, debris burning, and residents have left town. The Camp Creek community is forever changed. It's a lot rougher. You ain't got no shower every day, and you just got to live day by day. Five people are living in a camper on Rambo Road, one of the hardest hit areas. Working 
working about every day, trying to get all this stuff piled up and burnt and just trying to start back over. But starting over is going to take time. Many of the students in Camp Creek are continuing on at South Green High School. And Principal Cindy Bowman says the tornado has changed the area, but it's also connected one another. It's just remarkable what the community has done. They've come together, uh, just, just moving trees and, and debris. The school has pitched in to help students in need. And while many short-term needs have been met, Many here realize the need is still great for the long-term recovery. And then you've got the fact that some folks don't have the money to rebuild. So that's why it's very important that we don't forget these folks. And the cleanup efforts are still going on and will be for quite some time. And FEMA is set up here in Greene County. They have been declared a federal disaster area. But one lady I talked to tonight got $8,000 from FEMA. And while that is great and it's a tremendous help to her, it does not cover nearly what she needs to rebuild her house. She still is working on a roof. She needs new windows. Until she gets new windows, they won't put the electricity on in her house. So she can't stay there. And all those cold nights we had recently, she needed heat, didn't have any. So she is still staying with friends. So there is still a tremendous need here in Greene County and all of Northeast Tennessee. So we are asking you to help and donate anything you can. The community here will greatly appreciate it. Garrick and a recovery and help tornado victims rebuild their lives with a donation. Texting Green to 27722 will aid recovery efforts in Greene County, Tennessee. Texting support to 27722 will help victims in Washington County, Virginia. Secure online credit card donations may be made at WCYB.com or donate in person at all First Bank and Trust Company or Tri Summit Bank branches and select area food city locations. For complete information on how you can make a donation, go to WCYB.com. We now welcome Wendy P. and Brenda Parrish Dickman from the Greene County United Way. And Greene County has certainly been impacted by these tornadoes. Wendy, I'm wondering, how is your agency helping folks in Greene County? You know, we have really had our folks working on the first response. Uh, the agencies that United Way funds in Greene County have done a tremendous job. Our rescue squad did the search and recovery effort with help from other rescue squads. Our local Red Cross has done a phenomenal job getting folks fed, making sure that they have temporary housing, as well as all the uh, amazing things that, that you would need that you don't even think about when you're not in a situation like this. Everything from coolers to uh, medicines, if, if they lost their home, they also lost their medicine, to uh, all those different things that they need. And they've done a phenomenal job to take care of that, and we could not be prouder of them. Mm. I can imagine, and Brenda, FEMA is stepping in for storm victims in Tennessee. How does that affect your United Way efforts? Actually, it's not going to affect our United Way efforts very much at all. Uh, as we heard earlier, they are, you know, they are making some uh, monetary uh, contributions to some of the people, but they're not going to be there for very long. And when FEMA's gone, we're going to still be there, and we're still going to have people with deep needs. And we we just are trying to find out what those needs are and until we know you know you realize every day there's something you didn't realize that right. uh, that you've lost and yeah. you've got to somehow find some some way to get it replaced right and that, that, that really is, is a good point of um, I imagine Wendy that the needs you talked about the night of the storm the few days after I have that have those needs changed now that it's three weeks later Absolutely, and every day where we're discovering new needs. And as Brenda said, as we move through this situation, this is a situation we haven't experienced in, in 30 plus years in Greene County. And as we move into it, we discover more needs. We're moving now from the initial response, which is uh, emergency shelter, emergency help, and making sure that everybody is accounted for and taken care of. Mm -hmm. But as we move into the long-term recovery efforts, that's when we start to see the needs that really cost a lot. So right. we really need the help. Right. And Brenda, can you give us an idea of how the money raised here is going to be used in Greene County? Well, we'll be analyzing the needs and we'll be getting the, the funds into the hands of our agencies who, you know, who are on the front lines and who know what those needs are. And it's, it's like we said earlier, every day you, 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 you think, oh my goodness, you know, what about their medication? Mm -hmm. What about their wheelchair that they don't have anymore? 
you know, we just have to be ready to, to look at the needs and allocate the funds to those agencies who are out there mm. on the front lines mm -hmm. and, and know where the monies need to be applied. But they will be kept in Greene County, anything that is sent in for us. And uh, we can assure you, as the United Way has done in the past, we will be very carefully analyzing where those funds go. Wonderful. Brenda and Wendy, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you for having us. us. And as they mentioned, it's going to be long-term needs. This is going to be going Absolutely. on for quite some time. For those of you who have actually lost loved ones, the process of moving on is even much more difficult. Our Rebecca Pepin spoke to the family of Bobby Blevins, who was killed when a tornado hit his home in Glade Spring. And Rebecca's live in Glade Spring. Rebecca, I understand his wife was in the home with him when their house was destroyed. That's right, Ann and Garrick. Debbie Blevins is a true survivor. I want you to take a look at the landscape behind me. I don't know if you can see it as well as we can out here, but that used to be full of trees. It is now snap trees, a cleared landscape, and that is where 55-year-old Debbie Blevins' home once stood. It is now completely destroyed. She has a broken femur, a rod in her leg, a broken pelvis, ribs, shoulder blade, and a severe head laceration and a punctured lung, yet she is still counting her blessings. Debbie Blevins has a long road of healing ahead of her. Her body took a severe beating when a tornado hit her home. I got as far as my laundry room in the hall, and here comes my wash machine. Hits me in this side, knocks me backwards through the wall. Me and the wash machine go tumbling through the air. Along with many broken bones, her heart is also broken. My life changed in 30 seconds. I lost my husband, my home. Debbie and Bobby Blevins were married 37 years. I said he could make me madder than anybody, but every day we laughed. Every, our whole life was full of laughter. The Blevins' daughter, Christy Lester, showed us where her parents' home once stood. This is where I grew up, and now I'm standing on an empty lot, and it's just, it's devastating. The tornado picked up the Blevins' home right off its foundation and carried it all the way across the road, slamming it into this gray building. Bonnie says Emery and Henry's students who came to help their friend ended up saving her life. And one of those young men had a tarp and he took it out of his backpack and covered me. They took coats off, they took air, shirts off, and it was so cold, bless their hearts. And the selfless acts just keep on coming. Amazing community support around us to have amazing friends, to have strangers that have come from the surrounding communities from neighboring states. But there's still more work to do in these tornado ravaged areas. My heart's broken for the people who haven't been um, taken care of. Debbie looking out for other people while she is sitting in the hospital with so many broken bones and she wants you to know folks please call the United Way and help those friends she's talking about. The information is on the bottom of your screen so you can help donate. In just a few minutes I will be speaking live to Christie's daughter all about Debbie's story and a very special treasure that they found on the site where all the rubble was. Please donate. Hello, I am Bill Hyder, president of the First Bank and Trust Company with offices in Southwest Virginia and East Tennessee. I am here tonight to encourage you to give to the relief efforts being organized in this community to support those people that have been so adversely affected by the recent storms. We have seen firsthand the effects that this storm has had upon the people in our community. Many have lost their homes, their businesses, and are struggling to make it from day to day. For this reason, First Bank and Trust Company has opened up an account to allow you to make deposits into the account. The monies will be going directly to United Way to help support the people in this region. The First Bank and Trust is prepared tonight to make a donation of $20,000, and we encourage you to contribute as well by coming into our offices. We will be sure that the funds are given directly to United Way with no administrative costs being deducted. Thank you for your support. Wow, that is good to right, hear. It certainly is. And families like the Blevins, who Rebecca was talking with, need your help. They mm -hmm. still need your help. They're going to need it for months to come. Remember, to help the victims in Virginia, just get out your phone. It's probably sitting next to you right now. And text the word SUPPORT to 27722. That's to help them in Virginia. Now, to help victims in Tennessee, 
text the word GREEN, that's G-R-E-E-N-E -E -E, with an E, mm -hmm. to 27722. And that's really one of the great things about here. It's your money. It's also your choice. You right. decide where, where you want your money to go. Preston Ayers is live tonight in Camp Creek, Greene County. And Preston, you've seen how neighbors, and really even total strangers, have really made a difference, haven't you? That's exactly right, Gary. From the time that I started covering this, the very next morning we were here in Camp Creek. You saw the volunteers out here pitching in. They were bringing by supplies, but they were also lending a hand and helping pick up and clean up from their neighbors. But throughout this storm, we followed one family in the Fall Branch part of Washington County, Tennessee. And he has an incredible story from the first time that I met Norman Dickerson. He told me that if they named storms, they had to name this one Norman because it took everything that the man and his family had, his entire farm blown away. But his story shows the willingness of the community to come together and help slowly build his life back. We first introduced you to Norman Dickerson the day after an EF2 tornado tore through his Fall Branch farm. Everything I've got's gone, six barns or seven. and Add two houses and two cars to the list of destroyed and every piece of equipment on the Dickerson farm in one way or another touched by the storm. Everything taken from this family in the blink of an eye. It's less than a minute. I don't know how long, but it was less than a minute. And it was just as calm as could be after that. Over the past three weeks, this old Ducktown Road farm has transformed from a disaster site back into a dairy operation. People has put me back on back going because we couldn't have cleaned the mess up in years. Hundreds of volunteers, many this farmer says he never met, have spent countless hours here, mending fences and rebuilding barns. Our cameras were rolling as a group of Mennonites pitched in for an old-fashioned barn raising. Dickerson says without the community, he wouldn't be here today. They was for a few days I didn't know what to do. It looks different here, but his family is still without a home and his fields still littered with shards of debris. Recovery on this farm is long from over. It'll be six months or maybe a year, I mean, before we ever get things back. And as they slowly start to rebuild, Norman was telling me that it is going to be such a long road and they still need help, even with all of the help that they have received there. And it's not just Norman Dickerson, it's families all across this region. Tonight, you have a chance to help those folks and to help them as they move forward, not only this week, next week, but in the months and in even years to come. So please dig into your pockets, dig into your hearts tonight and help them out this evening. Gary Canan. And Preston, I've got a, a quick question for you. You were there three weeks ago. Has it changed much? It looks entirely different at that farm site right now. When we were there originally, just right after the storm hit, there were still rubble and buildings still standing there. Those have now been bulldozed away. They've started rebuilding the foundation of his house, and he's hoping that they'll be able to get that started and a lot of work on that in the next couple of weeks. We showed you the Mennonite building there that they built the barn back. It is completely finished. Our cameras weren't there when they wrapped that up, but he actually has some equipment back in there. But the happiest thing for Norman Dickerson, the neighbors came together and they put together his milk barn. So last week he started milking again and he said that was the best thing for a dairy farmer is being able to get back to milking. Not only was it back to some normalcy, it's also back to his job that had been taken away by this storm. But still, there is a long road and it's and not only on his farm, his brother also lost a house there. That's one of the two that I mentioned in the story. So there's such a great need in the Fall Branch community as well, just of folks still trying to build their, their lives back together. And that's why it is so important tonight to be able to, to reach in and, and to give them just a little bit. Yeah, depending on the kindness of their neighbors and strangers. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Preston. Well, you know, these storms really touched many communities. Mm -hmm. In fact, one tornado touched down in Johnson County, Tennessee, and unfortunately, two lives were lost. News 5 WCYB Fox Tri-Cities Donnie Cox was there the day after, and he talked to storm victims. In Johnson County, the path extended from Butler to Doe Valley. A storm claimed two lives. Crews, with the help of some prison inmates, have been trying to clear debris. As the storm cut its path through Johnson County, several people reported the same thing. It only took 10 to 15 seconds, but when they got up this morning, plenty of destruction that will take quite a while to recover from. With so many trees and power lines down, some roads had to be closed. When the storm hit, it was a scary moment for Elizabeth. It sounded like just something beat, beating against that window. It was like it's like something knocking on the window. Thank 
while mom was just thankful to get through it. I just thank God that he kept me safe because it was all him. Because if not, I, I feel that me or one of my girls, you know, we could have possibly gotten killed because that was my biggest fear of the roof picking up and taking one of them and me not being able to do anything about it. Her home was spared from the storm that hit all around her in Doe Valley. Now let's head back out to Glade Spring, Virginia, where Chief Meteorologist Dave Dirks is standing by. And Dave, when you think about it, you think of this as something that happens to the Plains states, right. not in our region. It's hard to believe that they did that much damage here. Yeah, it's absolutely, it's hard to believe, absolutely. You know, when I think back to that night, Garrick and Ann, I think of the, of the helpless feeling that all of us in the News 5 WCYB Fox Tri-Cities Weather Center had. I mean, we were able to provide that complete coverage of severe weather, you know, give the warnings, give the safety information, track the storms on radar, show the folks where the tornadoes were, where they were going, and the communities that were likely to be in, in line for that over the next few minutes or the half hour to the hour or, or an hour. But we had absolutely no way of preventing any of the destruction that we knew that that was probably happening with so many tornado warnings that were issued across northeast Tennessee and southwest Virginia that night. I remember very well when that one tornadic cell went over downtown Bristol, over uh, over our studios, and the hail started coming down so hard. I mean, it was pummeling the studio, and we were live with continuous coverage, and it got so loud in the studio that we could barely hear each other talking. We were just a few feet apart from one another, and, and we, I'll be honest with you, we were all thinking the same thing. Is a tornado next? And it was a scary night for a lot of folks across our area and, and thankfully the no tornado touchdown in Bristol and, and probably no tornado touchdown where you're watching us now on television but let me just say nine tornadoes did touch down and there were a number of communities affected and many many people uh, affected by those storms and I can only think about how how frightening it was for them when they heard that loud roar coming and then moments later you know, the, the, the nightmare experience of, of their home being damaged or in many instances just completely being blown away. And obviously there's nothing we can do to uh, uh, make that scary night go away, but we can help tonight. And that's why we're here for this hour live broadcast on News 5 and, and Fox Tri-Cities is to kind of, uh, you know, solicit your financial support for all of those uh, folks uh, that were affected so terribly by that destructive and uh, tragically deadly night of tornadoes on April 27th. Garrick, Ann. All right. Thank Thank you. Dave Dirks is in Glade Spring, Virginia tonight. Thank you, Dave. And of course, the worst is those 14 people who yes. died because of the tornadoes that hit that night. But many more were injured or were lucky to survive. I knew in my heart that he was gone, but you still have to pick up. We've been over here for days, picking up, piling up, burning stuff. You know, you still have to go on. I know that's what he would want. My brother was a real good Christian man, and I know my brother's in heaven today. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah, it's hard. I'm gonna miss him. I'd give anything in the world just to wrap my arms around him and hug him and kiss him on the cheek and tell him I love him, because we always did that. And I told him, I said, any of you find him, I said, I wanna go to where he's at. And he came straight to me and got me and took me there. My brother had a little poodle dog named Pua. The dog was laying right at his feet. The dog's alive. Heard a great big boom. And when I did, I knew what had happened because one had just went through and hadn't touched down, but that other one was coming behind it. I knew what it was, and I said, oh, my Lord, because I knew that's what had hit. And then everything just caved in around me. It's something I've never been through. I never want to go through again. I was very fortunately to be here. <laughs> very lucky. And then the Lord had to be with me. Because if he hadn't, I'd have been gone. It's a great place to live. You have to build back? Yeah, we're going to build back. I hope. <laughs> if we can ever get cleaned up, we'll build back. You know, th those are real folks here in our area. Mm -hmm. they, they really are. And, and we've only been on the air for a little more than half an hour. The folks in this area, because of their generosity, 
they have already pledged more than seven thousand dollars that's just in in the past 30 35 minutes that's incredible and a testament to all of you right exactly well just a few minutes ago rebecca pepin shared with us a story of christy blevins lester who lost her father and her mother was severely injured when that tornado destroyed their home in glade spring and rebecca joins us once again live from glade spring virginia and you have a, a guest rebecca yeah, absolutely. A very special guest, Christy Blevins Lester herself. You had mentioned the $7,000 just now. That is exactly why she is out here. She is busy taking care of her mother in the hospital right now and still mourning the loss of her father. But she came out here because she knows this is for such a good cause and to help people like her mother who survived the tornado. Now, I want you to meet Christy Lester. And also, I want to tell you about a very special treasure she has with her. Christy, I understand this Bible was found in the of your parents home it was this this Bible belonged to my dad and it was something that he treasured every day and it was actually found by my uncle my mom's brother who's also their pastor so that means a little bit more to know that Johnny was actually the one that found it and to know that now it's a treasure we'll hold on to until the day when we join our dad in heaven and tell us a little bit about how it has been important to you to see the community come forward in all of this um, this community has been amazing. Um, Jason and I both have grown up in Washington County. We're both graduates of Patrick Henry High School and members of the alumni of Emory and Henry College. And to have grown up in Glade Spring, to live in Abingdon, and just see our hometown here of Glade and members of Washington County and surrounding communities pull together to help our friends and neighbors has just been overwhelming. The support has been amazing. All right, Christy Blevins Lester with her husband, Jason Lester, here tonight. Now, Christy's mother is watching us from her hospital bed as we speak, and we want her to know that there's a special guest here waiting to give a donation to Christy. Come on in, Dr. Rosalind Reichard. She's the president of Emory & Henry and also on the board of the United Way. Please tell us what you have. Well, I'm very proud to represent the United Way of Russell and Washington County to present you today with a check, a check to cover the deductible on your insurance. Thanks. This represents, of course, a lot of individuals and organizations across the region that really care about you, and I know you know that United Way cares, and we want to help you in every way that we can. Thank you. What does this mean to you, the deductible on your mother's health insurance? Um, it's amazing. It's amazing. Mom works so hard, and my dad works so hard, and just to know that people care, and um, Jason and I have been active supporters of United Way for years because our employers, Washington County, Virginia Public Schools and ABS Technology Architects, encourage their employees to give back and to be part of our local communities. And to know that there are other businesses out there that do the same and that try to, to give that encouragement and also to support the local communities is, is so encouraging to us. And, Everyone's been asking how they can help the Blevins family, and the best thing you can do now is to call and to help the United Way, because by helping the United Way, you're helping us and you're helping our friends and our neighbors. All right, now I know this is a tough one for you, so I'm gonna stand very close to you. Okay. Yesterday, I met Christy's mother, Debbie, mm -hmm. in the hospital when we did that interview. What a sweet lady, incredible spirit. And she told me, I'll be watching you tomorrow night. And so we know she's in her bed right now watching. What would you like to say to mom? Mom, I love you, and I'm so proud of you. And I know daddy's watching too. And you amaze me every single day and I can't wait till you make it to Oz. You've been calling yourself Dorothy and Bella Toto, and soon you're gonna make it to Oz, and that's our house, and we're honored that you're gonna live with us, and we can't wait to have you home. I love you. All right, Christy asked me to step in if she started crying and make a special announcement for her. There's going to be a memorial service to honor the life of Bobby Blevins and to celebrate the life of Debbie Blevins. That's happening Saturday, June 11th at the chapel at Emory and Henry College. It's starting at 1 o'clock and it is open to the public. Please donate. Good evening. My name is Lisa Paris. I am a Universal Fibers employee. When I learned of the devastation that touched down in Glade Spring, it really hit home um, because I have lived in the Glade and Meadowview community my entire life. So when I came to work and expressed my concern to the company, I was not at all surprised that we stepped up to the plate and um, was eager, willing, and able to make a sizable donation to United Way, as well as hundreds of employees have donated food, clothing, and cleaning supplies to help out in the relief efforts. And we hope that you can do the same this evening. 
Well, it was a sight I had certainly never seen and could not believe when I made it to Glade Spring the evening after that tornado went through. Being an Emory and Henry College alum, Glade Spring was our home during college. And to see memories from my years there, like the table in the Petro where we spent all night studying, just destroyed and was heart wrenching. But despite the shock and the devastation, I knew everything would be okay. This community welcomed us as college students into their homes, their churches, and businesses. And I knew they would treat a stranger as a neighbor, as family, and take care of each other. We hope tonight that you will become a neighbor to those in need. And we have an update for you on just how generous folks in our area are. And you can say that again. The last time we spoke about the amount of money raised so far this evening, it was five minutes ago, right. and it was just over $7,000. Mm -hmm. Five minutes later, it's over $8,000. And that's going to go a long way to helping a lot of people in the months to come. Certainly will. Now let's go back to Camp Creek in Greenville with News 5 WCYB's Fox Tri-Cities, Preston Ayers. And, and Preston, you're joined by the uh, Greene County Emergency Management Director, Bill Brown. That's right. We're talking right now with one of the guys that's been on the ground here for the past 22 days. Bill Brown is the Emergency Management Director and Director of Homeland Security for Greene County. And Bill, let's first talk about the destruction in your county. We're standing in the midst of where several homes were just a, like, three weeks ago. What's it like in this county? Well, this uh, this county has been devastated. Um, and, and just to be quite honest with you, the, the people here are still traumatized also. Uh, there's a lot of damage, you know, and a, a lot of folks have actually lost their homes. You know, we've had 100 homes destroyed, uh, a total of 234 homes that have been damaged, 88 farm buildings destroyed. Uh, you know, it's just total devastation. And those numbers are astounding to hear, but I guess put that into comparison for folks. How does this compare? You've been in your job for, for a number of years, I know. How does it compare to what we've seen in this county before? Well, we actually did have a presidential declaration in 2001, uh, and there's no comparison. Uh, simple fact, we did have uh, property damage in 2001, but, uh, you know, we had a lot of, of property damage. But the most importantly, you know, with uh, seven fatalities, uh, in this county, um, had 93 people that were injured. You know, th that's uh, that was devastating. And a lot of help has already come forward. We've already seen volunteers out here. Talk about the response from the community to this point. Well, we have. We've we've had somewhere in the neighborhood of of 2,500 uh, volunteers that's already came forward to help with these people. But there is still a great need. This is going to be long-term recovery efforts. This is not going to be fixed in the next six months or probably even a year. But uh, just just to be quite honest with you, uh, we're still in need of monetary donations and also volunteers. And, and tonight is all about raising the money for the folks here. Talk about that need. You see it every day. How desperately do they still need these funds coming through? We have FEMA. But that you know only goes so far. You're exactly right. The FEMA funding does only go so far, and uh, being in this in the prior, uh, actually, you know, um, there's just uh, so many unmet needs that are still not met and, and will continue to be. And, and the funding is very important for for these victims. Bill Brown, Director of EMA here in Greene County. Thank you very much, Bill, for talking with us. Bill, talking about the need there. And I've been in this community since the day after it happened. And, and my father actually has worked here for 30 years. And Angela, talking to him and what he has seen here, he still gets emotional about it. And the destruction here is just incredible looking at it. Yeah, I think he said 22 days, three weeks after this all happened. It is still a shocking scene, although a very much different scene than when we were first here that couple days right after it happened. You know, people were still shocked at that time truly not knowing where to begin or what to do. And when we would drive around this Camp Creek area, everyone was inside their yards or inside what was left of their home, looking through, trying to find anything that they could possibly save. From the air above Greene County, Tennessee, our cameras capture the debris and damage left behind. On the ground, residents were taking a first look at the devastation left behind. Homes reduced to a pile of rubble, cars torn apart, roofs missing, pieces of metal wrapped around trees. Residents here say they are shocked and saddened. It's just no words for it. Uh, just total destruction. A lot of lives lost and people's dreams lost. Rescue crews from all over the region scoured the area for the missing. This is my brother's home right here, and they were in it, and there was a double wide on this side, and they were in it, and they, some of them went to the hospital, and a couple of my friends around the corner here, their trailer's gone, and they're both dead. 
This pile is all that remains from a storage shed in the Camp Creek community. The owner tells us at one point it was about 50 yards over, but because of the high winds and possible tornado, everything was completely moved and now two motorcycles and a lawnmower lay in the middle of the yard. Many people chose to stay inside of their homes during the tornado. Camp Creek resident David White says he hid inside of his closet with his five year old son. It seemed like it lasted about 45 seconds. Um, I could see a lot of light, uh, looked like electrical power lines uh, sparking and then everything got quiet. People here are working together to help one another start what is likely going to be a long cleanup process. And that cleanup continues and the need is still great here in the Camp Creek area. I want to introduce you to Billie Jean Bishop and her daughter Katie. I met Billie Jean that first day after the tornado and we were out here and there was truly nothing left. We were working all day and Billie Jean was so kind. She had lost the roof on her house, but she let me come inside and use her bathroom because I didn't want to use the porta potty. And that was the kindest thing anyone could have done. She just lost half of her house, but was so willing to let a stranger come into her home and utilize what little things she had left. And that is just the character of this community. They are willing to help anyone, including myself, who wasn't in need, just had to use the toilet, and she was so generous to help me. And ever since then, every time we come back, I stop by to see how she and Katie and their dog Nellie are doing. So joining me now is Billie Jean. Tell me how it's been for the last three weeks, what you guys have been going through. Well, we uh, don't have anywhere to stay, so we've been having to stay with friends. Um, we don't have uh, a lot of the things that we need, you know, just to make it every day. And um, it's just really been hard not to be able to come home and to be together as a family. And your house is in the background here. When I first came, it had a yellow tarp on it. Now you have a roof, but describe what you still need to do. You don't even have electricity yet. Uh, no, I'm not able to get electricity yet because it done a lot of damage to the wiring. And um, I still need windows. I've got to have siding. Uh, the porch isn't built back. Uh, I was fortunate enough that some individuals donated me enough tin to get my roof put on and uh, some workers actually donated their time and came out and put that on for me. But there are so many other things we still need. You know, I'm, I'm going to be short monetary wise uh, in order to get everything I need to make this a home again for me and Katie. And Katie, we were talking, you are a softball player and you guys are in the playoffs and your helmet blew away in the tornado. But talk about how you re recovered and how you've continued with your softball career and your school. Well, I didn't really lose a lot of stuff except for clothes and stuff. But, you know, I can manage with all the help that everyone's gave me and clothes and stuff. But it's, it's really not been that tough because there are great people around here that have really helped me a lot. So. And I personally ask everyone to donate because this is just an example of how great the people in the Camp Creek community really have been to us and to everyone here. They are very deserving and they could use all of the money that you are willing to give. Join in the recovery and help tornado victims rebuild their lives with a donation. Texting GREEN to 27722 will aid recovery efforts in Greene County, Tennessee. Texting SUPPORT to 27722 will help victims in Washington County, Virginia. Secure online credit card donations may be made at WCYB.com or donate in person at all First Bank and Trust Company or Tri Summit Bank branches and select area Food City locations. For complete information on how you can make a donation, go to WCYB.com. And we have a new tally in just the past 15 minutes, right? That, that's exactly right. The, the tally is now up to more than $13,000 has been raised for this effort just in, in the last 40, 45 minutes. And just another example of how generous folks here are in our area. Well, speaking of money, Lynn Shipley is CEO of Tri Summit Bank. And he says that bank is proud to be involved in the recovery effort. All of us at Tri Summit are really disheartened to, to see the devastation caused by the weather effects of the last several weeks. We've had clients affected by this, and certainly our neighbors have been affected by this across Northeast Tennessee and Southwest Virginia. We're doing our part to assist in the recovery effort by accepting your contributions um, at our offices in Bristol, Kingsport, and Johnson City. And we encourage all of you to participate with us um, and the other corporate partners in, in this recovery effort. And other companies are also stepping up to help storm victims here in our area. One of those is Food City. And joining us here in the studio is Ron Bonacci. And Ron just said off camera that he no place else he'd rather be right, exactly. than here helping to raise some money. I just wanted to say that, Ron. Food City has been a good corporate citizen, of course, throughout the years. And once again, you're pitching in with donations, right? 
Absolutely, and on behalf of Steve Smith, who you heard from earlier, our president and CEO, and our 13,000 associates, there's no greater honor than to be here to help support WCYB and the United Way. And, and Ron, as we saw earlier, um, you all are setting up donation centers for folks here in the community to help. Tell us how that's going to work. Well, yes, we have several stores that we're setting up. We've got banners and signages in our store. We're giving message receipts to our community, and we're asking our customers where we live and grow and our neighbors to uh, help support those in the tornado relief in communities. And there are some stores, but not all. Is that right? That's correct. We're taking the four counties that is most devastated, uh -huh. and that's Pulaski, Washington, and Russell County in Virginia, and Greene County in Tennessee, and we're taking all those stores, which is... Uh, many of those and give it donations. We have set up inside our stores a $1, $3, and $5 donations because okay. there is no greater need in our communities than today of what happened out there. And we're asking our community uh, supporters and shoppers to uh, support them as they have done in so many ways of sure. communities that we've done before. Sure, we have seen that in the past. I'm, I'm curious, how long will people be able to donate at, at those particular stores? Um, as of today, through today, through Saturday, May 28th, we're asking them to give donations of any denomination they can use multiples of each of these or anything that they want to do to help and assist those in need. Okay, great. Ron, thanks so much for being with us here tonight. Oh, it's tonight. a pleasure to be here. And again, one of the areas hit hardest is Glade Spring, Virginia. And with the FEMA actually declining assistance, the need is even greater for some. Yeah, it sure is. Rebecca Pepin and Paul Johnson rejoin us from there with more stories on how the storms have affected lives. Hey, Ann and Garrick, so many lives affected. For example, 63-year-old Faye Thompson of Chilhowee, Virginia. She was in her trailer when it was flipped upside down by the tornado. She was pinned up against a wall by her mattress, her little dog in her arms. Her little dog did survive. And you've been talking about the generosity of the community. Well, guess what? Complete strangers have sent Faye money. Tell me about that. Uh, several people from churches um, where my family goes. Uh, just different people has, has sent me money, friends, um, everybody's just helped so much. The Red Cross, they were there twice a day with drinks and food, and I just want to thank everybody that helped me. I know, now you're living with family members, but thank God you have them. Right, living with my dad, and um, Thanks for everything. Thanks for everything. And she has a special treasure in her hand. It was her mother's quilt. It was in a glass case and it survived unscathed. I also talked to earlier a family that had just invited other family members to live with them just days before the tornado hit. We're talking in one house, four children, four adults, all the way from eight years old to 91 years old when the tornado hit. And they have just one word to describe what happened. Terrifying. David and Tabitha Collins were sure they were in the clear on the night of April 27th. The whole family had gone to bed when Tabitha heard what sounded like the roof being ripped off the house. I woke my kids up, um, got them to the hallway, and it just, it was a rumble, like, almost like living near a train track, and it, you, it just the whole house was shaking. But at the very beginning, it was this like complete loudness. It was like a war going on. This is what their property looked like the next morning. The garage detached from the house. A trailer flipped upside down, power lines on the ground, and trees splintered. The family now just thankful they all survived. There was one more family member here when the tornado hit, little Brennigan. Volunteers found him pinned underneath a tree. The family members here say they're grateful for everyone who has stepped in to help them from rescuing the dog to helping them clean up the property. But there's still more to be done. And now we're getting into the things that we need, like material things, like to be able to put the roof back. It does mean a lot to us because, like, at first we only had, like, a few people just helping out. And they also wanted to thank some of the local schools who pitched in to help and a pharmacy that stepped in to make sure their 91 year old grandmother was not without her medication after the tornado hit. And they want to thank everyone who has come forward to step in and donate to the United Way. PJ. We've talked about communities, but what about companies? A lot of companies have lent a lot of support to help these folks. One of those companies, Bristol Compressors. When news of the disaster in Glade Spring reached the folks at Bristol Compressors, the plant quickly put together a volunteer effort. Walter Dix, the company's human relations generalist, lives about five miles from where the twister touched down. 
but it literally sounded like a freight train going through my front yard to the point where I could feel the floors in my house vibrate. I realized how close that came to being me. You don't realize what it can do, but it can destroy everybody's lives. Lynn Perkins works on the assembly line building compressors. But during her first day as a volunteer, she helped put lives back together. You know, and you, we went up there and just looked around. And we was going through the neighborhood, and the old lady sitting on her porch crying. You don't know what to say. Perkins and her team gave out food and water. She took these pictures. The destruction is clear, but so is the effort by an enormous amount of volunteers. It's so good and refreshing to see all these people just working. I mean, it was just tons of people in that area working. Do you look forward to the day when you can go back to Glade Spring and it'll all be back? Yeah, where you can see everything back the way it used to be. But until that time, both Perkins and Williams say they will continue to volunteer until the job is completed. Companies helping, communities helping, and now it's your turn to help. That's right. It's incredible the amount of people who have come forward and the amount of money we've managed to raise tonight, but there's still more done, more to be done, folks. So please text in your donations or do it online. The information is all at the bottom of your screen. Hello, I'm Stacy Pomeranke, Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer for BV Authority. As you know, recent tornadoes have impacted many families, friends, and neighbors in our community. Within hours, BBU employees and trucks were in Glade working tirelessly through the weekend. We later sent crews to Greenville, Tennessee to help with their recovery. Using every available resource, BBU employees and their families have volunteered time and energy to help with the recovery. While we have been reaching out, the need is still great. BBU, along with other companies, has contributed to the United Way, where we've all come together to make a difference. BVU will continue every step of the way to help rebuild our community. We want everyone to recognize the ongoing need and please do whatever you can to help. Join us as we help those whose lives were forever changed. And as she was mentioning, you know, the folks are helping here in our area. In fact, we're up to $18,000, $18,000. And it's gone up just in a few minutes since the last time we talked I about know, it. I know, and thank you all so much. Chief Meteorologist Dave Dirk spent most of the day on April 27th tracking all those storms to let you know when they were getting ready to land. And he joins us once again from Glade Spring. And, and Dave, this recovery is really going to take a long time. A long time, and you guys are absolutely right. It was like five hours of uh, tornado warnings, one right after another that night. Um, I think every county in northeast Tennessee and southwest Virginia was under a tornado warning at one time or another that night, and there were two counties, Greene County, northeast Tennessee, and Washington County in Virginia, that were under four separate tornado warnings from se uh, four separate storms that were coming through that night. I mean, that is completely unprecedented for our area. Heck, that would be unprecedented for, I bet, a lot of counties in Oklahoma and Texas and in, in, uh, in Tornado Alley, but uh, uh, this, uh, this tornado outbreak uh, in the southeast being labeled as a once in a generation uh, outbreak. And it's our generation that witnessed it, that woke up to the destruction and, and unfortunately the tragic lo loss of life, but it's also our generation guys that can, that can help these folks and, and donate and, uh, and, uh, and, give, uh, uh, and help these folks pick up the pieces and get back, uh, back on track as uh, they continue to uh, try to do so uh, from these deadly storms uh, on that April 20th. 27th night. Guys. Okay, thank you, David. We want to mention we're about to run out of time, but you can continue to give the, the throughout the evening and, and really in the, in the days and, and weeks to come. The information is there. It's also going to be on our website, WCYB.com. Absolutely. It's so easy as getting out your phone and texting, going online to WCYB.com. You can't miss where, you're, you, where you can donate. You can also walk into a, a number of businesses in the area and select locations also on our website for more information there. We want to thank all of you for all the money raised. Thanks for being with us. And for Grand's Memorial Day sale is on now. Find holiday savings store wide. Plus up to three years, no interest to paid in full within 36 months. Get the splendid leather recliner sofa just $6.97. Holiday savings up to three years, no interest. Grand's Memorial Day sale. Attention. On April 27th, Wallace Imports of Bristol's entire inventory of new Kias, Volkswagens, Subarus, used cars, trucks, and sport utility vehicles suffered hail damage from a severe storm. Wallace Imports of Bristol's inventory will, will be, be sold, sold with huge hail discounts, discounts plus all available factory rebates. All units are subject to prior sale and will be sold on a first-come basis.